Let's display our template inside of our edit shopping item page. Let's take our template and add a color to the navbar by saying color primary. And then if we take the template of our add shopping page and we add this to our ion content and at the moment we can remove the click event for our button. We'll come back to that later. And instead we rename our item to be edit item. Inside of our edit shopping item then, we can unwrap our observable. And we can create ourselves a shopping item to be a new JavaScript item as a shopping item. So similar to what we did before, but this time we're going to take that reference and instead of assigning that reference, the async pipe, what we're going to do this time is actually unwrap our observable. And we're going to say that by saying this dot shopping item reference dot subscribe. And we're going to take that shopping item and we're going to pass that into this dot shopping item is equal to the shopping item that we get back from our reference. So if we can add a comment here, we can say set the scope of our Firebase object equal to our nav params or our selected item. We can then subscribe to the object and assign the result to this dot shopping item. And by doing that, what we then get access to is that object inside of the shopping item. And by the shopping item, I do mean this dot shopping item. So as a result, we can create ourselves a function which updates the referenced item over a Firebase by saying edit shopping item and we'll pass in the shopping item of type shopping item. So we'll add a comment here and we can say update our Firebase node with new item data. And in this circumstance, it's super simple because all we actually need to do is pass in the reference and similar to before how we would say remove, this time we want to say update and pass in that shopping item that we've changed. So in order to change the item, we need to pass in a click event and the click event can be passed to the function edit shopping item with the shopping item as a parameter. Now, if you remember, the shopping item is simply attached to the scope of this ng model for both the item name and item number. So let's take a look at this cheesecake. If we select it and then hit edit, we get the edit shopping item page with this cheesecake and the number of five. If we change this to instead be spaghetti and click edit item. And this time, if we go back, you'll see that our item name is now spaghetti. So we can take this edit shopping item function. We can update the Firebase node with the new item data. And then as before, we can tell our nav controller to pop backwards and send the user back to the shopping list page. At this stage in the process, I will also update the title of this page to be equal to the shopping item dot item name like so. Now, if we select our pizza and hit edit, you can see that we're editing the pizza. If we change something so that this is ice cream and we hit edit item, the item name becomes ice cream on our shopping list page. 
As always, we can go through and remove the item by hitting delete. And the item is removed from our database as well as our application. And the final thing to do is we need to unsubscribe from our object observable when we leave the page. That can be done in a few different ways. We can either import take from RxJS or we can simply assign this as a subscription. In this circumstance, I'm going to assign this as a subscription. And to do that, I will import from RxJS slash subscription. And we'll import subscription. And we can say shopping item subscription is of type subscription. And where we're subscribing to our observable here, all we need to do is state that our subscription is equal to that observable. And this just gives us the power to unsubscribe from the observable when we leave the page. And that can be done inside of the ion view will leave function. This is a lifecycle hook that fires each time the view will leave. And all we need to do is say this dot shopping item subscription dot unsubscribe. So we can say unsubscribe from the observable when leaving the page. This just frees up any memory resources and ensures that we don't have any unnecessary subscriptions. Now, one of the benefits of using this async pipe inside of our shopping list page is that the subscription and unsubscription is handled automatically by Angular. So we have a much cleaner application and we don't have to worry about manually subscribing or unsubscribing from the observables. So in the last couple of lectures, we've looked at adding the edit functionality of our shopping list. We can now go through and edit our application. We can change things like the number. So we want two ice creams instead. And all of this is committed to our Firebase database.